So, now uh, the TS diagram uh, for the air standard Brayton cycle with the two stage uh, compression process and intercooling looks like this. So, rather than going from one all the way to some uh, state like this, which is what we would have done with no uh, uh, with no intercooling, we go from 1 to uh, 2s, the air is then cooled to the same temperature as 1, although this illustration does not show that. Remember T3 is equal to T1. Okay. And then again there is an isentropic compression like this, and then heat addition, expansion in the turbine, and then heat rejection. So, as I said, since the power required uh, with multi-stage compression uh, is less than a single stage compression, we expect the overall efficiency of the cycle to improve. Uh, and this intermediate pressure is the square root of for two stage uh, compression is the square root of the overall pressure ratio. So, let us uh, redo the previous example with two stage compression. So, the overall pressure ratio was 30. So, that means the uh, pressure ratio across each stage is square root of 30. Okay. So, this is the same as before we need not uh, do this again, but for the uh, for state 2s the pressure is now 100 times square root of 30. Correspondingly, uh, the uh, value for PR 2s is 7.59. So, we enter the table with uh, this value for uh, PR and we retrieve H like this. S need not be uh, computed again because S2S is equal to S1. So, for 7.59, so if we go to 7.59, 7.59 for uh, PR2S. So, 7.59 falls between these two. So, we interpolate between these two values and uh, 482 to 492 and we get H to be 480, I am sorry, 488.64. Now, P3 over P2S is also uh, uh, square root of 30 because with optimal intermediate pressure, the pressure ratio across each stage is the same. <coughs> but remember, T3 is equal to T1. So, we use this value of a temperature to go into the table and we retrieve PR just like before. H just like uh, before this also same as before, but uh, yes now has to be calculated using the expression that we derived uh, that we that we wrote down earlier. Remember yes has to be calculated using this expression here and if you do that you get uh, the specific entropy at uh, state 3 to be equal to uh, 1.21386. At state uh, 4s, the pressure is 3000 and PR4s is nothing but PR3 uh, times square root of 30. So, we go into the table with uh, this value for PR and we retrieve this uh, value for the uh, specific enthalpy. Uh, entropy, specific entropy need not be evaluated because S4S is the same as S3. State 5, at the end of the combustion process, we assume that there is no pressure loss during heat addition. Temperature is given to be 1300 Kelvin. So, we go to the tab air table with this value and retrieve H and let me just write it like this. So, we retrieve H and uh, S0 and uh, specific entropy at S may be evaluated using the expression that we wrote down before and that comes out to be 2.29715. 5 to 6 S expansion in the turbine is an isotropic process. <coughs> so, uh, PR 6 S works out to be 330.9 divided by 30. Remember, there is no reheat there, it is a single stage expansion. So, it is 330.9 divided by 30. So, we go to the table with this value for PR and retrieve this value for H. S yes, need not be calculated again because uh, 5 to 6 S is an isentropic process. So, the specific power required uh, for the compression process comes out to be 376.9. Notice that this actually this is equal to this because the power required in each stage is the same. So, we need not have done it like this, but 
does not matter, it comes out to be 376.9. Let us compare this with what we had before 376.9 against 488.92. So, you can see that there is a substantial reduction in the power required for compression as we expected. Power produced in the turbine remains the same. So, power uh, required for the compressor decreases by 22.9 percent. Power produced in the turbine remains the same because uh, there is no change on the uh, expansion side. Now, Q dot H uh, comes out to be 907 against 606. So, you can see that there is a substantial increase in the rate of heat addition in the cycle. Heat rejected uh, same as before because state 1 and uh, uh, state uh, 6 is or the same as before. So, heat rejected is the same. Efficiency comes out to be 52.3 percent. So, this is actually a reduction when compared to the basic cycle. Primarily because of the substantial increase in the uh, heat addition. Although uh, the compressor power has uh, reduced, uh, the amount of heat that is added to maintain the same peak temperature in the cycle has gone up. So, if we did not have uh, intercooling, uh, then uh, state 4s would have been here. And the amount of heat added from here to here uh, was calculated before which would be less. But now, state forest is over here and the amount of heat that has to be added to take it all the way to uh, the peak temperature of 1300 Kelvin, remember this is. So, that is substantially higher. As a result of which, the overall thermal efficiency despite the reduction in the compressor power required goes down. The overall thermal efficiency still decreases. So, we need to uh, find out how to address this. So, we like the fact that the compressor power comes down, but this seems to be a problem. So, we need to address this which we will as we go along. So, rate at which exergy is supplied is 1074 compressor plus uh, heat added in the combustor and rate at which exergy is recovered is 851.62. This is slightly more. Uh, I am sorry, the turbine work, uh, turbine work is the same. Yeah, turbine work is the same, net power is slightly more. So, the second law efficiency it comes out to be 79.2 percent, which is also less than the 89 percent that we had before. Okay. So, addition of intercooling, uh, two stage compression with intercooling has reduced the compressor power and improved the specific power output from the, uh, from the engine. The power output increases because turbine work remains the same, compressor work has gone down. So, the net uh, specific power increases. So, it improves the specific power, but both the thermal efficiency and the second law efficiency decrease because of the first one increases because of the decreases in the amount of heat that is added that is this one and the second law efficiency uh, decreases because. So, this is the uh, rate of exergy destruction in the heat addition process. So, this is 115.6 compared to compared to 38.49. So, you can see that there is a substantial increase in the uh, exergy destruction in the uh, combustor. Whereas, the exergy destruction in the uh, in the condenser or in and the or cooler remains the same. So, this remains the same. This has increased substantially and this has also increased substantially. So, as a result of this, the first law efficiency has come down and as a result of this increase, the second law efficiency has come down. So, we now uh, will take a look at the effect of reheat. Remember, reheat is the same as multi-stage compression with intercooling just on the expansion side. So, we expand up to a certain intermediate. So, this is an intermediate pressure. Again, the optimal pressure is uh, already known. So, that would be uh, uh, such that the pressure ratio between 3 to 4 s and uh, 5 to 6 s is the same. Okay. So, we expand to this optimal pressure from here to here and then uh, it is taken to the combustor where, where heat is added in such a way that uh, T5 is equal to T3 and then it undergoes further expansion here. So, for optimal operation T5 is equal to T3 and P4S over P3 
is equal to p 6 s over p 5 is equal to square root of p 3 I am sorry, uh, p 4 s over p 5. So, this should be p 5 over p 6 s and this is equal to p 3 over p 6 s equal to square root of r p in the cycle. So, let us see how this impacts the uh, performance of the cycle. Uh, we start in the same manner as before, state 1 is the same as the basic cycle, state 2 is again is the same as in the basic cycle, not in the uh, Brayton cycle with intercooling. State 3 also same as the basic cycle, so we do not need to uh, repeat the calculation. Now, state 4 is is at an intermediate pressure 100 root 30. which means uh, uh, PR 4 S is 60.25. So, we uh, go to the table with this value for PR and retrieve H. 3 to 4 S because it is an isentropic process, we need not evaluate uh, S again for state 4 S. State 5, again state 5. Uh, <coughs> pressure is 100 root 30 because the heat addition reheat process is a constant pressure process, but it is reheated to a temperature of 1300 Kelvin. So, we go into the table with this value and retrieve uh, PR and retrieve H and of course, S0 also. Yes, uh, for 5 may be evaluated using the expression given earlier. So, S uh, of state 5 is equal to S0 of um, uh, S0 corresponding to 1300 Kelvin minus or natural log uh, P5 over P ref. So, if you do that, you get uh, S to be equal to 2.7853. 5 to 6 S is an isentropic process. So, we go to the table with uh, this value for PR which is nothing but uh, 330.9 divided by square root of 30, square root of Rp. And we retrieve this value for H and the specific entropy is the same as uh, 5 because S6S equal to S5. So, we have all the values that we require now to proceed with the calculation. Specific compressor power same as uh, what we saw in the uh, basic cycle. Specific power output from the turbine, we now have two turbines each producing the same amount of work. So, the specific power output from the turbine has increased now as you can see. Heat added has also increased when compared to the basic cycle because we now have a reheat stage also. Heat rejected has also increased because uh, state points, uh, this state point would earlier have been over here. So, earlier would have been over here. So, the heat rejected earlier was equal to this. So, now because the state point 6s has moved over here, there is an additional uh, heat rejection that is taking place, right. So, this is the additional amount of heat rejection that is taking place. So, uh, heat rejected has also increased. So, the uh, thermal efficiency or first law efficiency comes out to be 48.7 percent, which is still much less than that of the basic cycle, but the specific power has increased by uh, almost 22 percent. So, specific power has increased, but the efficiency has decreased due to the increased heat addition. And again, uh, exergy supplied in the compressor and uh, in the combustor, exergy uh, recovered is in the turbine only. So, the second law efficiency is 76.56, still not close to the 89 percent that we had for the basic cycle. 
and as we said the uh, uh, primary reason for uh, for this is the fact that the exergy destroyed in the uh, uh, during the heat addition process is now uh, higher because we have additional uh, heat addition also. So, both the heat addition as well as uh, heat addition in the combustor as well as heat addition during reheat has actually increased the overall heat addition resulting in reduction in uh, thermal efficiency and heat rejected has also increased you have to bear that in mind as well. So, reheat also uh, just like uh, multi stage compression with intercooling reheat also increases the specific power, but results in a reduction of thermal efficiency first law efficiency as well as second law efficiency. So, um, uh, what we need to address is how to actually uh, uh, combine intercooling. So, intercooling is beneficial because it reduces the compressor power, but there is a penalty that is associated with that and uh, so we will try to address this uh, in the next lecture. How to actually uh, not only improve the specific power, but also improve the first law and the second law efficiency.